And I kind of like to subject the general audience, like young audiences, to this music and not necessarily tell them it's microtonal and just see if anyone asks. And definitely in the Bull and Pierce music, no one ever asked, is this microtonal? They just say, well, it has this spacey flavor to it, but you know, they don't think of it. So I think that's a good sign. Okay, well, so I went to NYU and I had this um, horrible decision whether I did chaos music or whether I was going to do my thesis all on Bull and Pierce. And it was a really torturous decision. I finally chose to do chaos music. Um, I guess I do have a little math in my genes. And, but I, was, I only used Bull and Pierce to play this chaos music. And I just wanted to show this real quick um, it, that it lends itself to playing, I hate to say random because this is purely deterministic as you can see. Um, if you know, if you just play all kinds of Bull and Pierce notes randomly, a lot of harmonics line up. It's a very tonal tuning. So, I guess I'm kind of a equal-tempered snob. Is that something I can? I, I only use the equal-tempered version of everything. So, the equal-tempered version of the Bull and Pierce scale is more harmonically pure than the equal-tempered version of the normal 12-tone scale. So, playing random notes. You know, they line up if you have the right timbre. So let's see, what can I play there? Well, the 1991 isn't part of the function. That's the year. <laughs> Sorry about that. Right. Well, So this was kind of like high-level psychoacoustics test. So it was really interesting to me. And uh, just a small part of what we did, which we've been talking a lot about. I've a few different talks have mentioned chord inversions. And they did some listening tests with um, all kinds of subjects. And so they had um, non-musically trained subjects and musically trained subjects. And interestingly, um, neither group of subjects found the Bull and Pierce scale chords and their inversions to be similar. Instead, their similarity ratings were correlated to the average pitch of the chords. So musicians and non-musicians said, no, I don't really notice that's an inversion. And uh, the musically trained subjects rated traditional 12-tone chords and their inversions as similar, obviously, because they were trained in that. And, uh, and the musically untrained subjects didn't. So if someone's not trained in music and you just play them normal 12-tone inversions, they won't easily don't know, oh, that's the... First of all, they have to learn the concept of an inversion, but they don't, they don't notice the similarity. So, you know, an inversion is just taking the bottom note and making it an octave higher. It's easy to lock into that octave frame. But even then, 12-tone, un, you know, untrained musicians don't even notice it in 12 tone. Um, 
So this was uh, consistent with the hypothesis that the similarity judgments on chord inversions are learned, and that with training, people might be able to actually uh, recognize inversions um, in BP and, and then you know, hear the music like, quite differently, like with harmo harmonic movement. Um, so, okay, so it's interesting that the idea that you could learn inversions in BP even though it's a tritive. So like 12 tone, it's just an octave transposition, and but in BP, an inversion is not the same, they're not the same pitch classes. You take the bottom note and put it up an octave and a fifth. So it's strange, but, so I've never been really sure about this. I thought, well, maybe they won't be able to learn it because, you know, since they're not in the same pitch class, maybe, you know, I thought this study is completely inconclusive anyway. Um, but I have started recognizing them. And in fact, um, Georg, it was your talk, right? You played the inversions, and I'm like, aha, oh, I do hear it. I think that was here. Yep. And I never, like, sat at home and really tried to do this, but just during his talk, I noticed I completely hear that as an inversion, but I've been drowning myself in BP for the last month. And it might also, the other reason I thought maybe it wouldn't be possible was because who's to say it's a tritive? Who's to say it's not a 14 note scale divided by that? Why would your ear automatically tell you it's the tritive that's the frame? Well, see, I think it wouldn't necessarily, but if there's context, if you're hearing chords and tonal context over and over and over and over, you start to snap into that tritive frame. And here's something that happened to me at home a month or so ago. I was playing so much VP music, I thought I was losing my mind because I noticed I just heard that as an octave. Like I landed on a chord and I thought I'm playing the wrong note because I meant to play a tritive and I thought I heard an octave and I was like, wait, there's no octaves. I was really tired. I'm like, I just heard that tritive as an octave. So not literally as an octave, but I heard it as the function of like what we're used to an octave. So that's why I think we should, could very well be able to learn to recognize chord inversions if you lock into that frame. But it takes tonal harmony to get there. If we're just playing atonal everywhere, then, then I don't think that that would be the right kind of ear training to do that. That said, I really don't think chord inversions really matter. That's more like a psychoacoustic kind of interesting thing to me. I think what's more important is that the tuning would be able to allow you to hear um, key changes. So key modulation as opposed to chordal modulation, you know, really, I think that's too important. And so according to John Pierce and Max Matthews, there were no BP cadences that had been found which gave much of their sense of finality, like ta-da, like four, five, one, you know. Um, and I totally beg to differ with that, of course. Um, the perception of key modulation was so tenuous that no systematic studies were given. The tests that they did had a lot of noise. Um, but it depends on the music you're playing for the subjects, of course. They didn't have a whole lot of examples to go by. But I just came up with this by ear. There might even be some misprints. <laughs> I don't think. Purely by ear. The tests I did with my listening subjects for my acoustics paper, they listened for harmonic movement. They listened for finality, like did the last chord bring it to a close, or at least lead somewhere, and um, in a modulating. So I started with these simple ones that began and end on the same chord just to train them a little bit. Mm -hmm. 